Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Today's video I'm going to teach you how to paint some watercolor apples. So let's do it! Okay, so to start I'm just going to go through my materials. I have my Arches watercolor paper cut into an 8x8 eight eight size. I have my Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolors in my palette. I have my Princeton Snap Brush in a size 10, my water and my paper towel, and we're ready to go. Okay, so we're gonna be painting apples today, and they're just gonna be very loose uh, apples, but it's super easy and a lot of fun. So I'm gonna start with some sap green. I don't know if you can see. It's hard to get everything in frame, but I'll just try my best. So I'm gonna start with a light wash of sap green. And I'm just going to start by doing a circle. Okay, this will be kind of like a top view of this apple. So nice circle. And it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. And then you're going to take more of that color and you're going to put it along one side of the apple like that and then a little area here okay I'm gonna just make this a little bit darker like that just so you can see the outline of it like that okay and now I'm just gonna use a bit more paint I'm gonna mix a bit of sap green and a little bit of hooker's green dark and I'm just gonna go in this side again just to darken it up to have like a shadow and that center over there okay so it's just creating a shadow and then you can even go a little bit darker if you want it's a little bit too dark for me so I'm just gonna blend it out a bit like that in the middle Okay, I might even add a bit of brown. Mix it with my green. Okay. And wash it off a bit and just blend it out. And because it's arches, it will blend a lot better. I don't necessarily um, recommend you tapping like that on like Canson watercolor paper, like the student grade. Oops, oh well. I just tried to blend that in a little in. But if you have higher quality watercolor paper, it will blend nicely. Again, just darkening up that area like that. Okay, so there you go. There's that green apple. We will add a bit of the stem later once it's dry. Now I'm gonna move on to a red apple. So I'm just gonna take my cadmium red, a really light wash, kind of the same. This will be more of a side view and I like to touch the apples together and then the, the colors kind of bleed. I like that look. So I do kind of a regular like apple shape. And I'm gonna fill that in with that light wash. You can leave a bit of white if you like. And then I'm just gonna go back in with my cadmium red. This one's gonna be more of like a mixed apple like a gala is it gala or gala apple so i might take a little bit of yellow too i'll just take some dark red Create that shadow. So if the shadow's over here on this one, shadow will be down here on this. It doesn't have to be. 
but just to kind of keep it all in the same um, like light source but it's not it doesn't have to be like that okay so there we go I'm just gonna darken up right here where the stem will be and then maybe a bit underneath there okay and then I'm gonna do a cut open apple so I'm gonna take really light wash of yellow there's actually a little bit of brown in my palette already here too which I want just a really really light wash of this it's really pale yellowy brown and I'm just gonna kind of do the same shape like this I'm gonna touch that apple a bit just because I like that look okay I'm gonna fill it in try and wash off that red a bit get more of that yellow on there and for this, I kind of like the watermarks. So if you're getting that with your painting, don't fear. I think it looks pretty cool. And then you do it to the other side. Try and get that yellowy, pale yellowy brown color. For the inside of that apple. And they almost like to make this shape, think of like ears almost. <laughs> Sounds a little weird, like apples, ears, I don't know. I'm actually gonna push the this red color away a bit by using a clean dry brush. I'm just dabbing it on my paper towel, washing my brush off, just pushing that red color away. Okay. Now I'm going to take my red, my cadmium red again, and I'm just gonna go around the edge so it's kind of like you're seeing a bit of the skin. Okay, so try not to have too wet of a brush because then it will bleed all in. It's okay if it does a bit like that. I don't mind that look. But even go right around that wet part. I don't know if I'm making any sense. Like that. Like that. That. And then if you want, you can always wash off your brush and dry it and push that red color out a bit just to get more of that yellowy center. Okay, I'm just going to go back in with a bit more of that yellow. I might take a little bit of brown while it's still wet. Just go down the middle. Where that stem will be coming out of. Like that, okay? Um, okay, so we're gonna do, we're gonna do another one that's open over here. We'll do a green apple that's kind of open. So again, that yellowy color. You can have it facing a different way. Do the shape of an ear. Now it might bleed a bit, but it's mostly dry. Touching that red apple. Oh, filling it in. Okay, so just filling in with that light yellow color. And now I'm gonna go green around the edge of this one. Like that, so you can see this one was a little less wet so it didn't bleed as much as this one did 
So just keep that in mind when you're doing it too. I'm gonna take a bit of that brown, go down the middle. that and I will do the seeds later I'm just gonna add a bit of brown up here too I think I might make this a little bit darker like that okay so I'm gonna let those dry and I'll do one more apple down here I think I'm gonna do a dark red apple so I'm gonna take I already have a mixture of like purples and stuff down here. So I'm gonna take my cadmium red, cadmium red deep and I'm gonna take a bit of dioxazine purple to make it a bit darker. Might even take some burnt umber because I want a nice dark rich red apple. Might even take a bit of hooker's green dark make it red like a nice dark burgundy red like that yeah okay and then I'm gonna do similar to this one so I'm just gonna do my circle now this apple is already dried so it's kind of layered on top of this one which is fine I don't mind it this is more of like abstract not abstract but very loose so it doesn't have to look too realistic right So light wash of that, then I'm going to go in with my darker paint and pick a side that you want it to be shadowed on. I want it a bit more red than that. And where the stem is going to be coming out of. I'm going to wash off my brush. Gonna blend it out a bit. Okay. That I'm just gonna take some brown in the middle there. I feel like this apple should have a bit more shape than just like a circle. Because you know those red apples are a bit more shaped does that make sense they're like that heart shaped kind of apple <laughs> i don't know i'm really bad with words a lot of the time i just hope that you guys always know what i'm talking about i'm just gonna assume you do shadow that i'm just gonna blend this out a bit too it's too circular for me okay like that there we go okay now looking at this one specifically um, I'm noticing it dried it blended out a lot more than I wanted it to I like these little white areas but I wanted more shadow here so I'm gonna wait for it to completely dry and I'm gonna go back in and do a bit more detail so I'm gonna let the whole thing dry and then we'll come back okay so now that it's dry I'm just gonna show you how to add a bit more shadow um, on top okay so I'm just gonna take my brush and I'm just gonna wet the whole area again of this green apple not too wet but enough that you can get a nice light sheen over the whole apple. Okay. Just check in the light, make sure that you've covered the whole area. And then you're just gonna take your green and you're just gonna darken up the area that you want more shadow, okay? You're not gonna go over the whole thing again, but you wet the whole thing so you get a nice blend. So it will like blend out seamlessly because if you only like add more color to that one area, 
it's going to be a layer on top and you don't want a layer you want it to blend out but in order for that to happen that this whole area has to be wet if this makes sense so i don't know if i wet it up enough over here just gonna make sure the whole thing is wet Like that. Okay. It's a little sharp for my liking, so I'm just going to take my clean brush, my dry clean brush, and just blend out those edges just a bit. Okay. And there you go. That's how you can go back in and add more. Um, I don't think I'm going to do it to this one. I'm just going to leave it. Um, but I will start by doing the stems and detail. The, yeah, and like seeds and stuff on these. So I'm just going to take my burnt umber, mix it with a bit of black just to get a nice darker brown. Sorry if you couldn't see that. And I'm just going to create thin stem with a little bit of thickness on the top. Like that. Same here. Like that. <clears throat> and then we're going to go back in and add some seeds. Like this. To these ones that are cut open like that and I will add a stem on that one once it's fully dry but until it dries I'm gonna do some leaves and greenery so I'm gonna take some sap green I'm actually gonna take some cadmium yellow too and mix it with that I want some nice bright like lime green leaves And we're going to do some dark ones too. So I'm going to take some Hooker's Green Dark. You can overlap, have them touch if you want. You can just take some Sap Green ones if you want. Change up the contrast by, you know, using only a little bit of paint. And then using a lot more. You can add some like hooker's green dark into the stems of some of them if you want. Just make it look interesting. Just add some random leaves to fill in the white spaces. I'm pretend this one's going behind the apple. Doo -doo. And there you go. And I'm just gonna dry this quickly and then I will add the stem and then we're done. And there you go. There is your beautiful fall whew, apple painting. Now, if your paper ends up warping like mine did, I do suggest, you know, taping it down so that doesn't happen. Um, there are some things you can do if your paper is really warped and it's like a finished piece that you want to save. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole process. I've never actually done it, so I don't think I am the type of person that should be telling you how to do something I've never done. But there are videos on YouTube, so check them out. 
um, and see how you can flatten your watercolor paper. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram for more. Have a great day guys. Bye. Say apple. 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 Apple.